All right, so last week I gave you guys this lab, which was a ship and some asteroids, and the asteroids were able to respond to you shooting bullets, and the asteroids themselves would blow up. Now, what I wanted to have happen were three things. One, I wanted the, the asteroids to rotate at a very specific rate, so I wanted the asteroids to rotate at 45 to 90 degrees per second clockwise, or minus 45 to minus 90 degrees per second counterclockwise. So I wanted some random rotation, but it is, it's either positive or negative. Then I wanted the concept of a medium asteroid, so when you blow up a large asteroid, medium asteroids will spawn, and blowing up a medium asteroid will cause small asteroids to spawn. And then finally, I wanted to have the asteroids have a collision with the player. So let's do the first part here. So right now, these asteroids are all rotating in the same, uh, the same direction at the same rate, 180 degrees per second. <coughs> so what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to go to the place where my asteroids are rotating, which is here, right here. So this 180 degrees uh, per second is hard-coded, which means that it's I typed in literally the number 180 and I didn't change it. So I want to make this something that is between the numbers of 45 and 90 and occasionally it will be negative. So how do I have this thing be a random value between 45 and 90? Well, one way, and this is not, this is not the, uh, the actual solution, but if you want to have a random number, I'm going to have a create a variable called rotation rate, and it's going to be equal to 45 plus 45. This will give me a random number between that's at least 45 and all the way up to 90. Now, I can use this here. However, this is going to be a problem because what's going to happen is that this rotation rate is going to be recalculated every frame. I need to make sure this rotation rate is only set one time. Otherwise, RAND getting called every frame will cause my asteroids to kind of like jerk periodically. So sometimes they'll speed up a little bit more. Sometimes they'll speed up a little bit less. But what I want is I want these things to rotate at a constant rate. For instance, if I make this thing really big, make this thing RAND 360, So you can tell that some of the asteroids are kind of doing a weird, like, jerky movement. So I don't want that. I want something that's more consistent. So I'm going to take this variable, and I'm only going to calculate it once. And I can't just put it here in the constructor, because if I put it, this variable only lives between these two lines. So I need to make this thing a member variable. So I'm going to create a variable that lives in the asteroid header. And this variable is going to be private, or let's make it protected. It's going to be the rotation rate. This rotation rate will be my variable I use to determine how fast they rotate. So going back to game object CPP, I can replace this rotation rate with M rotation rate. And then I can replace it here with rotation rate. And I said I wanted uh, did to be negative as well. So what I can do is <clears throat> if I flip a coin, which is I generate a random number between 0 and 1, and half the time that random number is going to be 0, half the time it's going to be 1, the time that it is actually equal to 0, I'm just going to take a rotation rate and multiply by negative 1 so that some of my asteroids, half the time, my asteroids are going to rotate in the opposite direction. So I'm going to take the rotation rate and calculate it and multiply. So I'll flip it around. So some of these asteroids now will be going the opposite direction. So this asteroid is going the opposite direction. This one's going the uh, clockwise, clockwise, and then all the rest of these three are going kind of clockwise. Okay. Right. So that's how you get the rotation rate to be a specific amount. Now I want to set up the uh, the spawning so that when I blow up an asteroid, like so that they don't just go away. Asteroids, the way it works is that you spawn a bunch of asteroids, and then uh, when you blow them up, smaller ones get spawned. So first things first, I want to make sure that I'm spawning only large asteroids. I have this behavior to randomly spawn large and small. Instead, I'm always going to be spawning large asteroids here, like so. So I'm going to make sure that I have five large asteroids spawned in my level. Okay? And then let's set it up so that when these things get destroyed, they actually spawn more asteroids. So the place in the code where it actually is responsible for getting destroyed is there is this function in the base class, which is called virtual 
avoid destroy. This function gets called whenever you want to blow something up. So in this case, it's implemented in the base game object. But because we're using object-oriented programming, I can change the behavior of what happens when an asteroid gets destroyed different from where a regular game object. So when an asteroid gets destroyed, I'm going to spawn a bunch of smaller asteroids instead. So I'm going to take this function that's currently implemented in class game object, and I'm going to move it down to the large asteroid function, like so. And then I'm going to take this function, and I'm going to implement it into the large asteroid class right here. And I'm going to take this large asteroid class, like so. Now, one thing I do want is I do want this asteroid, if I just create this function and I don't do anything in it, the way that object-oriented programming works, it'll call this function on the large asteroid, and it will not call the base version of game object. So notice that I'm shooting these asteroids and they're never actually blowing up. So this is happening because the bullet detects that there's a collision. It asks the large asteroid, hey, destroy yourself, and then the, lar the function doesn't do anything. If we want to have, make sure that the asteroid is still blowing itself up, we have to make sure we call the base class is destroy. This syntax right here, where I do game object colon colon, will call the base object, game object here, and call it the normal destroy function. What this does, I'm going to put a breakpoint right here. When I blow up an asteroid, it's also going to make sure it does the normal thing, which is to destroy itself. So I'm going to shoot it. Oops. Let me make sure that I have a. So you can see here that now I'm shooting these asteroids and they're actually blowing up. I go down here, down to my large asteroid. So I'm calling game object destroy. Oh, I can't set breakpoints here because it's going to be uh, optimized out. But this line right here lets me destroy the large asteroids. What's nice is that now I can write a loop, and I can just loop three times. And what I can do is I can spawn things here. So just like how I spawn things in the engine when I create a large asteroid like so, I can take this code here, I can take all these four lines of code, or these, I guess, six lines of code from my engine, from my main function. I'm going to take this whole thing, and I'm going to write it here. I'm going to just paste it here inside the large asteroid. So I'm going to spawn, instead of large asteroids, I'm going to spawn some small asteroids. I'm going to do three small asteroids. It's going to have a random direction and a random velocity. And then I have to call add object. This Unreal Engine 6 variable only lives inside of our main function here, right here. But thankfully, all our game objects actually have a pointer to this thing. We had set it up before last week. There's a member variable. If I go to the header, scroll up to the game object class right here. This pointer lives inside of game object, which means that I can use it and it's passed in, it's initialized whenever we actually create a new object, so I know that this pointer is going to be valid. So which means, when I go to my game object, instead of calling Unreal Engine 6 add object, I'm just going to call it an engine. Because it's a pointer, I use the arrow operator, and then I do that. This code will spawn three small asteroids with a random direction every time a large asteroid is destroyed. So I'm going to shoot. You can see it actually hits a breakpoint here. I'm going to continue about this asteroid. So see how they're spotting randomly everywhere around the, s the screen? We're going to want to change that too. We don't want them to just spawn wherever. I want these asteroids to spawn at the same position of where this current asteroid is. So right now, this code here puts it randomly everywhere, but I can just pass in a position here. And this m position is the large asteroid's position. That's what this member variable represents. Which means now, when I blow up a large asteroid, the small ones will spawn from where the large one came from. You can see here how they're all spawning like so. Okay. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to repeat this behavior, but I said I wanted to have a medium asteroid, and medium asteroids, when they blow up, they create small asteroids. We don't have the concept of a medium asteroid yet, so let's make that next. So here I have large asteroid. I'm just going to duplicate this, and instead of calling it large, I'm going to call it medium. It's going to have the same functions overridden. I'm going to take these two functions here, go to my game object CPP, and I'm going to write the constructor. Now, the constructor is going to follow the same pattern as the large asteroid, so I'm going to copy that. And the only difference is that instead of using meteor brown big, I'm going to use medium brown medium. And let's make sure that my sprite is correct. Let's do meteor brown med. Like so. 
It's me setting up the constructor for the medium asteroid. And then I'm going to write the same destroy function for the medium asteroid. And I'm going to copy this whole thing. This is the one from destroy for the asteroid. I'm going to paste it here. And I asked for how many? I think I said two small asteroids. Okay, so I'm going to create two small asteroids. And that's going to, the behavior is going to be exactly the same. But now I'm going to go up to my large one. I'm going to change this from small to medium. Like so. so I have created a new object, which is a medium asteroid. And when I blow these up, I get the medium ones. And when I blow up the medium ones, I get up. So there's no uh, collision here. Notice I can't actually shoot these things, probably because the collision radius is a little bit too small, if I had to guess. Let's see here. Let me make sure I set my collision radius on my medium asteroid. Let's try like 30. Yeah. Let's try that one more time. So I missed that originally, but now you can see when I'm blowing up these asteroids, they're all they're all breaking into smaller pieces. And if you wanted to, you could do something kind of weird, which is when you blow up a medium asteroid, why don't you spawn some large asteroids? And so you get into this loop of every time you blow up a medium one, you get a large one back. So there it goes. This, <laughs> this behavior is kind of weird, but you know, maybe, there's a, maybe there's a game in here somewhere. So the behavior is pretty uh, straightforward. So the key here I want you guys to kind of be aware of is an asteroid, the only two functions I had to change were the constructor for the texture that, that I want to pass in and the destroy function for what happens when you destroy it. Everything else about this asteroid remains the same. I didn't have to write the code again for making sure these asteroids move and have collision mm -hmm. detection. Okay. So this is why object oriented programming can be really useful. Okay. So the next thing is I asked for the asteroids to have collision with the player. When the player hits an asteroid, it's to store the player ship and print you lose to the screen. Okay. So the player, I want to have collision with asteroids. So what's nice is that um, the player, I can add a function to the player for when he collides with something. Very similar to how the bullets have this function for collided with. I'm going to create this function in the player as well. So the player is going to have the same function. Let's go to the constructor. And in here, the player, when he collides with something, it depends on what he collides with, right? I don't want him to collide with bullets. I want him to collide with asteroids. So if we take a look at the bullet function, we did this thing called the dynamic cast. Dynamic cast tries to take this pointer and sees if this game object pointer is a player. Or you can pass in anything else in here. You can just pass in an asteroid if you want to. So I can do this. I can take this whole function that's from the, uh, from the bullet. And what I want to do is I want to see if the player collides with an asteroid. So instead of dynamic casting the thing I collided with against a player, I'm going to try to see if it's an asteroid I hit or not. And if it is an asteroid, what I'm going to do is I'm going to destroy myself, like so. Okay? That's all I need. So this asteroid here will mean that when I run into an asteroid, oops, I need to make sure that I'm actually colliding with these things. Oh, I didn't do this correctly. This is supposed to be null. If this thing is null, that means that the, the object that I collided with is not an asteroid. If this thing is actually a valid pointer, that means that this dynamic cast succeeded and it successfully found that this thing I'm hitting is an asteroid. So you can see I actually hit the asteroid and it blew up. Now, I can be specific about this. I can make it so that I only collide with something like small asteroids here. This dynamic cast can let you be as specific as you want to, which means if I change the behavior like this, I won't collide with regular asteroids. I won't even collide with medium asteroids. However, if I shoot this to be a small one and I run into one of these, I blow up. This dynamic cast basically tells you exactly what type of object that you're dealing with. And in this case, I don't, I don't care about small. I care about any specific asteroid. So. Game object pointer. This thing, remember, it can point to anything that's derived from game object. All of our things that are derived from game object are asteroids, bullets, and players, and soon to be something like UFOs. So this dynamic cast will let us figure out what it's pointing to, because you can't actually tell. All right. 
So let's do the last part here, which is I wanted you to print out the words game over when you lose. So that game over idea, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to first just print out game over all the time just to make sure that I have the text working correctly. And the place that I'm going to do it is here in the game engine. So the game engine here is our, is our engine responsible for having our list of objects. And this is actually what's responsible for drawing everything that we have. So what we can do here is we can add an object that's just text and just draw that right here. So if you guys remember, there's a, there's a way you can load fonts here. Let me go and uh, grab a font. And really, you can use any font that you want. Grab this font file. Put it right here. I happen to have a font that's like, you can look at any of these. So I'm going to grab this Ken Pixel TTF. Now the way this works is SFML. If you can't remember, there's documentation on how to like load textures, uh, load fonts, and show them. And since I'm just doing this really simply for now, I'm just going to call it every time and draw. And I'm going to pass in the file name like so. And if I was able to successfully load a font, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create text here. And I'm going to say my text set string. Use. And then the window is going to be set to draw this string. Like so. Now what I just want to see is I just want to see this text working. I'm not seeing it working just yet. I want to make sure that my font is It looks like my font failed to load, probably. Did you the font I need to make sure I actually put this in the right folder. Oh, good call. Yes, that's the part that I was missing. Making sure my font is being set. This should be in the top left corner here. So I'm just going to reposition it to be in the middle. And right now it's going to be drawing all the time, but we're about to fix that. I don't know, let's see. Cool. It's actually drawing underneath everything, which is kind of funny. So we'll just move this to be drawing after. And we are going to make sure this thing only draws when we've actually lost, right? Right now it's drawing all the time. How do we know that we've actually lost when the player doesn't exist anymore, right? So what is the best way to determine that a player doesn't exist? So this is a little bit weird because the player just kind of kills himself and doesn't tell anyone about it, right? So we want to make sure that this text here only draws when it's considered to be game over. So there's a few ways to do this. The simplest way we want to do this right now is inside of our engine, we have our class for engine right here. We can have a bool here is game over that's in our engine that by default will be false. So I can make a constructor here and we can have a function here that's called set is game over, like so. And this function here, all it's going to do is going to set this is game over flag to be equal to the value that's passed in. And then in our constructor here, which we can use, which we, we can actually initialize it right here. We're going to make sure it's false by default. Now, I did this so that when I go into my draw function for my engine, what I can do is if is game over, put an if statement around here, this whole thing. And if this bool is set to true, I will draw my text. So now that I've wrapped this in an if statement, it's false by default, so I shouldn't see the lo you lose text anymore. And I just need the player to tell the game that the game is over. So when the player, right here, the player destroys himself, what he can do is he can also tell the game 
engine, set is game over true. This is the player telling the game, hey, the game is over. And what this will do will be set that bool from false to true, and then I'll suddenly cause our text to start drawing. Looks like I lost immediately because I hit an asteroid, which will happen. So here I am, and then I can hit an asteroid, and I see the you lose. All right, and that's the extent of it. Questions? Okay, let me put this up on Zool. This guy's gonna have it.